they're great filmmakers, Sam Dunn, yeah, Scott McFadden. Yeah. They came to yeah. you, and you thought, hmm, how, how did you approach the decision around letting them do it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we were kind of skeptical. Um, we didn't really see that there was a story there. And, uh, I mean, they were both pretty honest. I think it was Scott who said, well, we're not sure what the story is, but we know it's there. And uh, we just like to have the opportunity to find it. Uh, so I was like, fair enough, you know, to your career, you're going to ruin by doing this. So go ahead. Wreck your lives. It's a great film, and I love the fact that unlike a lot of documentaries about bands, they did go chronologically, which is a real challenge and a feat to do it effectively, considering it's a long history yeah. and a lot of records. They, they did it incredibly well. I think they were very conscious of uh, the fact that fans have been waiting a really long time for such a movie and they wanted to pay the proper respect to their the things that they would want to see in a film so aside from the humor and the, the big picture things they really did have the uh, heart and souls of our fan base at in their minds when they were putting it together I think and that's why I think it unfolds in that in that way. Agreed. Comes out on DVD for anyone who hasn't seen it in the theater on the 29th as well. Brilliant. Is there something that you learned about yourself as you sat there and watched it that you kind of rediscovered or discovered for the first time about the individual that is you, Getty or Alex? I was way skinnier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you looked like a girl <laughs> when he was young. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, what I think resonated with me was that it wasn't a film about a band as much as it was a film about friendship. Yeah. And that was kind of nice. Uh, I think that's kind of the gel that makes that movie work on, on another level and, and for people that don't know us or may not be interested in our music or, or may even hate our music. It's not about us as much as, as the whole circumstances and what what is possible with three friends. Yeah, if you yeah. extract the music from the equation, it's still a great story. Yeah. About friendship. Yeah, who would have known that? That's for sure. Incredible. It, it seems to be a year of great convergence, as I see it, with the, with the film, the tour, a uh, new album. Uh, you've already been inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame, um, the Songwriting Hall of Fame here in Canada. And now, who would have thought uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. How does that feel? That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, we will be in there with Don Rickles and uh, Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's in a really crappy street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have to hope so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. That's a yeah. Weird, that one's a weird, weird one for sure. Have you kind I'm of excited about it? But yeah. it's still weird. I hope it's near a lingerie store or something. <laughs> <laughs> really seedy burrito stand. Uh, or a deli. <laughs> well, have you kicked your way along uh, the boulevard and then kind of, you know, looked down at other people's stars in, in the past? Uh, just around uh, Man's Chinese Theater, yeah. I always go down there. Uh, when, I have, when I'm with someone who's never been to L.A., I always take them down to that part of, uh, of, that, of town. And, and obviously it's kind of always a thrill to look at those things. But... Uh, it must be pretty long by now, yeah. that, that walk. I guess there's, there's over 2,000. Yeah. Somebody said it wouldn't have been great if it was, you know, the 2,112th. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. it's a little higher than that now. 2,400, I think, ish. Well, congratulations. Thank it's, you. It's quite Thanks. a feat. A rock band. Oh, I love it. Um, what's in a name? I've been obsessed lately about names of bands back in the day, Rush might have seemed like an odd name, but it's really what it represents and what you prove to be that makes it a great name or a not so great name. So you've proven that Rush works. But your real names, could, could Gary Lee Weinrib and Alexander Zivojinovich have been stars, not having changed their names? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It was convenience more than anything. For me, my father, my, that's just a straight translation of our last name from Serbian. And my father had thought of doing that um, 
after coming to Canada, but decided against it. It was just really a convenience. All my life, just, you know, her one person after another completely destroy my last name. So <laughs> Did I just destroy just, it? No, actually, you were, you were very, very good. I would say 95%. But, um, you know, it was always a convenience from the, from the early days on. And, and that was really back in the days of playing in bars and high schools, actually. So. Yeah, I mean, I think for me it was kind of, I was at the age where I was kind of hiding from my roots, you know, trying to homogenize, you know, my self-image or whatever. I was 16 years old. All my friends called me Getty anyway. It was, you know, it's like Leave it to Beaver, you know. It was a nickname that I got, I guess, when I was about 12, right? I think it was about 12. And it just stuck, so just seemed natural to use that as my name and just cut off the ethnic part of the name and have this new image. And you look Chinese then, too. (laughs) (laughs) That helped. But to your point, to homogenize it, to to use the word you just used, like most of Hollywood did in the the golden age of of that place, more more people changed than did not. Yeah, It's nice to see that people are doing that a lot less now. Yeah. And that ethnicity is not something people are running away from, but it certainly was at that time in my life, anyway. And, and did you get Getty because your mom mispronounced said it in a yeah. way that sounded like Getty? She had a thick accent when I was yeah. little, and my friends thought she was Getty. Come in the house, and they're going, "What's she calling you?" And I said, "She's just saying my name." No, it sounds like Getty, not Gary. So they started calling me Getty, and that was it. There's As my mother would say, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> there's the songs you, you need to play when you go into a tour, and there's songs you really want to play, and I'm guessing, as we go back to moving pictures, that a- that album, perhaps, is a convergence of both. You, you, you want to play them, and you probably need to play them. Do they yeah, seem like obvious tunes to go and do live, all of them? They do. I mean, everybody wants to hear those tunes. They're certainly the most popular tunes, and in in many ways, the quintessential period of our writing, where we, you know, kind of reach this interesting amalgamation of uh, complicated songs and singability, you know. Uh, So that, it's kind of a pivotal record for us, and every tour we have to play at least a couple of them, so... uh, they're not painful to play by any stretch. No. They're fun to play. I don't think I've gotten sick of any of those songs yet. Yeah. Um, so that helps <laughs> when you're doing a full album of it. But last year we played a... Well, it wasn't last year, last tour. We played a bunch of songs from Permanent Waves, and uh, we were dangerously close at one time to putting almost all those yeah. songs into the set. That's another album that really, I think, is fun to play for us. Yeah. When, when Billy Corgan in the movie talked about Entre New, just how passionate he was about that, and he tells the story, obviously, of when he was a kid and played it for his mother and, and encapsulated everything he was feeling. It, that must have been quite something to see the impact of that on someone like him. Absolutely. Yeah, and so sincere. And so yeah. sincere. I thought he was incredibly well-spoken yeah. and really enunciated what the experience of being a Rush fan was at that period. I thought it was, I don't think anyone could have said it better. i never forget it. I think it was summer of 1980. I was in uh, Southern California on the beach, meeting all of these guys for the first time from, from that part of the world. And, and the first thing one guy said to me was, you like Rush? And the fact that I did was the most exciting thing he had heard all day. And he started singing all your songs and, and basically telling stories, not unlike Billy Corgan and some wow. of the other guys in the movie. I never forgot that. Yeah, it's common for us. We, uh, I always have friends or family saying, you know, I was in uh, you know, Argentina, and this guy came up to me when he heard I was from Toronto. All he wanted to do was talk about Rush. You know, it's a common thing you hear, and it's very sweet. It's really quite a compliment. 